Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do different watercolor projects every single week. We break it down step by step so you can just jump on in right if you're a beginner and do this with us or maybe you're like intermediate or maybe you're like, I don't really feel comfortable knowing where to put myself. This is for you too. So this week we are doing the treetop. It's beautiful and loose and fun and great variation and all that great stuff. So we are just using four colors for this project. The first color we are using is black, like so. Second color we are using is uh, dandelion yellow, like so. Third color we're using is leaf green. And the very last color we are using is Tahoe Blue. Now if you don't have these exact paints, you can use whatever paints you have at home. Don't feel like you can't do this just because you don't have these exact colors or brand. Basically you just want a yellow, green, blue, and black. That's what we're looking for today. And honestly, you can even forego the green because yellow and blue mixed together make green. So you guys can do this. Okay. We are using two brushes today. We are using a round six and a round two. Same brushes we use every week. They're Princeton, they're really high quality, they're wonderful brushes, and they're pretty affordable. So if you wanna take a look at those, we sell them on our website, letsmakeart.com. You can get brushes, you can get paints, you can get paper, kits. What else we got, Keenan? Joy. Joy, <laughs> exactly. Okay, we have these palettes. My favorite palettes, these are butcher tray palettes. Salt, no you can't get salt, but we are <laughs> using salts for this project. I am using McCormick Sea Salt Grinder. They're sponsoring us now. <laughs> no, they're not. I'll put a big X on that. Yeah, I will not say, not true. Not true. So I don't think I can say things like that, but it's funny. Okay. It is funny. So we just have four steps with this project. The very first step, we are putting in the branches. And I just made the branches black, but if you want to make them whatever color you can. A second step, we're gonna put in our leaves. A third step, we're gonna add some salt. And the very last step is details. Details, details. Just details. those finishing touches that are just like <laughs> I wish you could see Kanan. We essentially just did what I did, but better. Okay. But better, please. <laughs> So I'm gonna start off using my round six um, to get the branches part. Now I'm gonna come in from the left hand corner and I'm just gonna have the branches kind of go out this way. To the right bottom corner. To the right, like across. <sighs> Let's do this. Okay, I'm picking up some black. Now you wanna remember with tree branches, that you start thick and then they get thinner as you go out, okay? So I'm gonna start, actually, I'm gonna flip this around. Sorry, sorry, okay. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna do kind of a thicker line and then I'm just gonna like make my way down and you can see that I'm kind of like curves but they're not soft curves because they're like twigs and branches but sometimes branches do have those soft curves and then sometimes they have really sharp curves that doesn't make sense they have really sharp angles angles so try and kind of have a mixture of both so usually with the bigger ones i kind of go out and kind of soften it just a little bit and then as i get to like here then i'll kind of start to curve out now, also with branches, you know, you have little sprouts. That's not the right word. What's another word for that, Keenan? They're like knots. Yeah, knots, and then like area branches. shoot off. What'd you say? Branches. Branches. <laughs> they have branches coming off of the branches. They branch out. They branch out. There is, we go. Was that what you were looking for? <laughs> yes. I got confused. No, I... that is exactly what I was looking for, <laughs> oh, but perfect. I couldn't remember the word. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. So um, let your little trees kind of branch off and try and keep as you're you know, going out at the end here, try and keep these thin. And you can add as many as you want. Remember, we will be covering these with leaves, so just keep that in mind. But 
yeah, branch it. There's no like strong rhyme or reason to this where I'm like, every third inch you do another branch and then you do two small branches off. That's not true. Cause there's like a million different kinds of trees. That restricts creativity. It does restrict creativity and we are not interested in that. So just keep on going. And then this one I'm gonna kind of like make into one. And then sometimes like I'll do this where my line gets thicker. So it's kind of thinner back here or at least the same. And if that happens to you, then you can just go back and thicken up the base of where it's coming from. And then that way it's gonna feel a little bit more natural. Hey, yeah. Your microphone is being smothered. <laughs> okay. So you're just gonna keep on. Now I'm still using my round six doing these thin branches and that's because with rounds you can still get a really fine tip or line even with a larger brush, you just wanna do a more vertical hold and not have too much paint on your paintbrush so you can still do thin lines. And remember, if there's like something that you made, you're like, dang, I don't really like that branch, cover it up with some leaves. Nobody will even know the difference. It's not a big deal. There's some, um, I'm gonna have another branch kind of coming in this way. Now remember branches overlap a lot, so don't feel like they can't touch each other. They absolutely will touch each other. And you don't want them all to stop in one area. You see how for me so far, I'm having them stop kind of right here. I'm just, I'm being aware of that. And so I'm like, no, this branch is gonna go this way. There we go. You just want that kind of variation in uh, length. And they're kind of overlapping. What would be really cool to see with this project is if someone does like an ice blue and a frozen Missouri tree. Yes. That would be really cool to see. I actually was driving today and all of the trees, there's an ice storm right now in Missouri. Why well, I'm all bundled up here because it's so cold. And everything is covered in ice. Like every tree, every blade of grass, every branch is literally covered in a thin, which when the sun hits it, it's really pretty, super dangerous. <laughs> Not, safe <at> all. <laughs> Not safe at all. I've literally been ice skating around outside because that's how you have to walk. You have to like slide around or else you will fall. Okay, I'm gonna do another branch coming right out at the top here. Just kind of have that go across and then it's gonna start to thin out. You can have as many branches coming out as you want. Now, as we get kind of out here, I'm not gonna want it to be as like, like I feel like this area is where they're gonna be the heaviest in terms of branches because this is where those big ones are kind of branching and then the small ones. And then when you get farther out, it's like the little ones. So it's not as heavy because it's like only some branches are that long to reach out. You know what I'm saying? Keenan knows what I'm saying, saying. obviously. I've climbed and fallen under several trees. You are from Missouri. Are you from Missouri? No, actually I was born in Washington State. Really? Yeah. Learn something new. Literally lived here my entire life. When did you move out here? 1993. How old were you? One? Two. Two. And I'm going to have one branch off this way. There was a lady I went to NAMTA last year, which is the National Art Materials Association. And there was a lady doing a... Um, I don't know. What's it called when you like show people stuff? An illustration? No. They like have a booth. Demonstration. Demonstration. Thank you. I was close. You were close. And she was doing tree branches like this and I can't master it, but she was like going and then she like stopped and changed direction and then stopped and changed direction. So they're supposed to be like these little, I don't know. See how they have that little like, I couldn't do it very well. I can't do it very well. This I've works seen fine. Tree branches like that. Yeah. 
where they have that little, yeah, yeah. but she did it all in one stroke. She was so good at it. And she's like, you try it. And I was like, Meh. okay, moving on. And we can always add tree branches later. That's actually gonna be part of our detail step. So I'm just kind of doing some initial tree branches. And then if I feel like more need to be there, I'll add them. So don't, don't stress about this part. You can always add more tree branches, okay? It's black paint. You can totally paint that on top. That's step one. Good job. I feel like they've already got this in the bag. I, I do too. I'm gonna to actually rinse my water because we're gonna use water to lay down to do our green leaves and my water is pretty gray. So back down, come back in. Okay. Now it's nice and clean. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I hope that lines up just like so. Even if it doesn't, it's gonna be perfect because like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay. So we are gonna add on our leaves. Now, this is the fun part, okay? This is where your brain is going to tell you that you need to sit there and do this. And like paint a million little leaves off of a branch. Right? No. <laughs> Don't listen to your brain. brain. So you're basically just going to be doing um, brush strokes and mark making. And I really wanted to do this project because I just wanted to show you guys that just by using um, different brush strokes, you can communicate the same thing without having to draw every single little detailed thing. So we're gonna look at these in terms of bunches and this is gonna be a very loose painting. Obviously, it's not really super realistic in terms of form, but it's a fun way to communicate what's going on. So I'm just gonna use my six. I'm gonna use some water, hit it off the side if, so you don't have too much water. And I'm going to put water down and I'm just using the side of my brush, like the full billy, so I'm getting full, like a thick brush mark. And then I'm just gonna start dropping in color. So I'm just kinda using the side of my brush. Now the good thing about just using the brush strokes, using the side of your brush, small brush strokes, is you still get white spaces in between, which is exactly what we want. So we're not gonna take our paintbrush and do this across the entire thing because there's like no white spaces in there. What essentially you're doing is like these kind of like thicker things where we are leaving white spaces in negative space. And then we're dropping in color and it's gonna do its own thing. And that is what we want. We want the paint and the watercolor to just like spread and do and go where it wants to go and have freedom and it's gonna come up with some really cool things. So we're kinda of actually going to combine step two and three at the same time because when you do salt work, you want to lay the salt down or put the salt down while it's still wet. If you do it while it's dry, it's too late. So I'm gonna do a section and then I'm gonna put salt on it, and then I'm gonna move on. Now, this is where it's totally your choice. I'm mixing green and yellow and blue to get these different variations in color, um, but use those colors, it's your painting. So if you want more of a blue tree, then put more blue in your mixture, or maybe you want a tree with like pink blossoms, well then put some pink blossoms in there, you know? Like, feel free to make this yours. Another thing you can do is do water drops in there to get different textures. Now, when I'm adding these leaves, for right now I'm kind of av avoiding the black a little bit. We will overlap on some of the branches, like here I'll overlap, but I don't wanna go too crazy because that black will smear. It's okay if it happens a little bit. I actually kinda really like that look where the black kinda smears out. You can see it kinda right there where I went over it. We don't wanna do it across the entire thing though because then we'll lose the shape of our branches. So just kind of be aware of that. 
If you want to put the color down first, you can, and then just use some water to kind of start spreading it out. But I'm kind of trying to go off where the branches end. Drop in some color, just let it move on its own. And you just are going to do this across the painting. Now, the other thing I want you to keep in mind when you're doing these brush strokes is I want you to mix it up. I don't want you to do this, this same size brush stroke across the entire thing. You're gonna do some thicker and then maybe you'll just do some touches here. I just really want you to play with mark making and mix up what those marks look like because if things are too much the same even in something like this our eye is going to pick that up quick and it kills the illusion that it's a tree so you have to like just play where it's like some are thicker and some are little bits bits boots <laughs> there we go And these colors are gonna bleed together and it's gonna be super cool and then you're gonna throw salt in there. And you're just gonna embrace whatever the paint and the water decide to do. So it's kind of like hectic sometimes your brush making where it's like <laughs> if you can make that sound too. And drop in color. I love dropping in color. I'm a huge fan of color. So don't be afraid to, I mean, I know it's scary because sometimes you're looking at that blue. If you put in some color and you're just like, that blue is so bright. Like what is going to happen if I drop in straight blue? The coolest thing, okay? So I know it's scary, but you know, it's just paper. Live, on, live life on the edge a little bit and just play. Just like go for it. Now I'm getting close down to where kind of my branches start down here. So you just kind of work your way down. You don't want to leave this empty as it is right now because as we know with trees, there are different length branches. So the entire thing is going to be green instead of just like the top, right? So you just kind of keep adding some, your leaves, work your way down. Just kind of be aware of how much black you're kind of smearing and spreading. I kind of have a lot going on there, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Drop in some green. We'll cover that right up. And I'm gonna go a little bit here. I'm not gonna paint across with the green. I'm gonna start kind of going in between the branches a little bit more, but don't, we don't want it to feel perfect where it's totally filled in except for those branches because that's just not natural to what we would see. Still keep that kind of randomness or that hectic feel going. And if you can remember while things are wet, put in some salt. Now we did have, usually when we have salt work, people have questions like what to do with the salt after it dries. Oh, first thing, you're not gonna see the effects of the salt until it's dry. So if you put salt down and nothing happens right away, totally normal, don't put a billion more salts. Um, but you can see here that you, like the salt pushes that color to the outside, you get some really interesting textures. Um, another question we commonly get is how you get the salt off the paper, honestly, I don't even try and rub the salt off. I just like leave it on. But if it's really bothering you, what you can do is when it's totally dry, you wanna make sure it's totally dry. Sometimes I'll lift my paper up and kind of like knock it on the side and hopefully that salt will come off. Or I saw somewhere that you can like take a credit card or like a card and just kind of scrape it. You just wanna be aware not to smear your painting. So if there's anything wet on there or if your card is wet, it could smear. Just keep that in mind. Okay.
Okay, and then I'm going to start doing some branches that kind of go out here kind of on the side a little bit but what I'm going to do is we've really been playing with value so far in here and value is just the lightness and darkness of a color so you can see right here where there's a lot of color that's a dark value this is a dark value that's a dark value here we have some dark values that kind of thing we also have really light values this really light wash is a light value I would say that this is probably like a medium value. So we have that variation going on, which is great. That's exactly what we want in every painting. We want that variation of value. But as we get to the edge of your tree, the very top of your tree, I'm gonna try and keep that more of a lighter value. And that is because um, there would be a less concentration of leaves at the very top because that's where the longer branches are and not every branch is super long. That's sometimes where the smaller leaves are because those are the baby ones that are growing. So I try and communicate that with a lighter value. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So I'm mainly just using water, my water cup, and maybe if I have a little color left on my brush, that's what I'm using to make these kind of marks out here. I'm kind of using the darker and the medium values to communicate density of the leaves. So if you need to go in and add a couple more, feel free to. Now the other thing I want to do also, sorry, let me add some more down here, is I am gonna play with kind of that leaf shape a little bit just on some of the edges because sometimes you do get kind of that jagged edge on a tree where you can see like those outer leaves coming out. So you can just take your brush and just kind of do these kind of like, just here and there though, you don't want to do it on every, you don't want to do it on the entire edge of the tree. That's going to kill your tree look. And you don't want to do it on every single little section. It's just more like random where, where we're just trying to give the viewer enough information to be like, oh, I kind of, I recognize the feel of that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Would you tell me if it didn't? Yes, I would. Okay. <laughs> but usually when it doesn't make sense, it's because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> or when I say, does that make sense? You just go, mm. <laughs> you don't say anything. <laughs> Now you can use as much salt or as little salt as you want. Totally up to you. This is where you kind of have that creative freedom. And I just, I, I feel like I need some over here. Now this part has pretty much dried a lot. So what I'm going to do, since if putting salt on that right now really wouldn't do anything, I'm just gonna re-wet the area. And drop some color in there too. And then put some salt on it. And I am kind of overlapping some of these black, some of the branches, right? Because it's not like leaves don't overlap branches. I've they... never seen leaves overlap branches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need you to go outside, even though it's in the middle of <laughs> winter and everything is frozen. And no leaves are on the tree. No leaves at all. Okay, then you kind of take a step back and you're like, is there any parts that are feeling kind of empty? Now this white chunk up here is kind of distracting me. You can see in my examples that my branch started way lower in that corner, so I didn't really have that white chunk there. I started my branch a little bit later, so what I can do is I can add another branch there or I can just put a little bit more leaves there just to kind of fill that space so it's not so blaringly white in a big area. It's, it, we want it kind of small throughout. We don't want like a big, huge white chunk because then that just kind of looks bare. And I think you've said before, whenever there's something that takes 
their attention to something you don't want them to see isn't always good or something right. along the, that line. I mean, in art, you really are trying to just I don't want to say manipulate because that has negative connotations, but you're trying to guide the viewer's eye of where to go. Now you can do that, like sometimes there are focal points in a painting where you're like, focus on this. But sometimes if you have like a huge white spot in the middle of something, it can be distracting where the viewer will only look at that spot and not really pay attention to anything else that's going on in your painting, which we don't want them to focus on that. So that's just, that's where like taking a step back from your painting, looking at it far away, your eye will notice those things that are kind of standing out that might be distracting. And of course, as I always say, it's just a painting. So even if you do have something and something's not right or you don't like the shape of your branch, it's not a big deal. Just throw it away and do another one. It's a piece of paper. It, don't be intimidated by it. It's not a big deal, yeah. you know? You just kind of have to be like, Paper, you don't scare me. You big bully. You big bully. <laughs> the paper's like, I'm just a paper. <laughs> it has to be a paper I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> okay, that's it for our leaves. I think this one's probably a little bit more heavy handed than my example, but I'm okay with that. Some trees are fuller than other trees. Not a problem. Um, we have to let this dry and then we'll move on to the very last step, which is details. You guys, we're like almost done with this painting. You're doing a good job. Okay, last step, details. Basically, that's just, I'm just gonna put in some smaller branches in some white spaces that were in between my leaves. And then of course, you just kind of take a look at your painting, make sure there's nothing that's really bothering you or sticking out or that kind of thing. So I'm gonna use my round two to do these smaller stems pick up some black paint. And if you want to get a night, what I like to do for when I know I'm gonna do thin lines is I pick up paint and then I flip my paintbrush back and forth on my palette and it actually pinches the bristles together into a nice narrow point. And then I'm just in some of these white spaces, I'm just going to like put some branches. And don't feel like you have to connect these branches to already existing branches. When you see trees, you only see parts of branches here and there. So don't feel like it has to all connect. That's actually probably one of the biggest killers that I've noticed with trees when people are trying to paint or draw them is they do super, super thick branches across and they don't let leaves cut them off from each other. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So. <laughs> 100% I've been listening this entire time. Oh good, I'm so glad. I'm gonna get a candy bar. <laughs> so just kind of here and there, I'm gonna do just super thin little branches, kind of pinking out in these thin lines, and then fix any other thing. Like this is bothering me. I feel like the base needs to be a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna go in and thicken that a little bit. That feels better. I'm gonna like try and look at this while sitting down. I think that's good. I feel good about that. Actually, let me thicken this guy over here. Yeah. Okay, we finished the project. You guys did an awesome job. Um, the fun thing about this project is it's gonna be different every single time you paint it because we have salt going on, we have colors moving in the water, it's gonna wanna do its own thing and in this project we let it because it's super fun, super cool. Um, if you paint it, share it. You can tag it in Instagram. Our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art or you can hashtag Let's Make Art. Uh, we have a Facebook where you can do the same thing, tag us in it. Or if you are scared of posting your work in your personal feed, we have a wonderful Facebook group called Let's Make Art Together. Super supportive group. We have literally thousands of members, almost 8,000 members. Isn't that nuts? It's growing like crazy. It's amazing. People are super encouraging and super positive. And um, it's great because when you're starting something new, especially with art, you're so hard on yourself and you're so down on yourself and you're constantly comparing your work to everybody else's. And we don't do that here. And we don't do that in the group. And that's because it's not about who's the best painter. It's just about having fun and learning something along the way. So we embrace every stage where you are in watercolor, whether you're brand new or coming back to it for a while, or maybe you've been doing it for years and you just love to paint. That's awesome. Um, this space is for you. 
So share it, put yourself out there, be brave. You guys can do it. It's just a painting. And uh, I think that's all I need to say. So good job, you guys. Bye.